Hi, this is Dr. Rosalind Lewis Tompkins, and I'm the author of As Long As There's Breath in Your Body, There Is Still Hope. And you are listening to Your Beautiful Day on the Gratitude Radio Network. Pearl Scaranza, and I'm on with Neil Haley and Jen Mogg with the Gratitude Radio Network. I'm so excited you guys are all here today. And I'm excited to do this introduction because this is all about what I love. And it goes right in along the lines with my women's successful living and self-care. And today we have Dr. Roslyn um, Tompkins on with us. And we're talking about April being the National Month of Hope. And she is the, the Hopeologist. Um, she's going to help us discuss ways to promote hope and positivity, um, especially coming through COVID. I'm sure she's been working a lot on that with all the different places she's been speaking. Um, but she wants to encourage you guys today as you're listening and watching to become citizens of hope through her Make a Difference Monday campaign. And that's by spreading positivity to everyone who needs it within the power of social media. She's the founder of National Month of Hope, as well as the founder and president of Mothers in Crisis, Dr. Rosam Talk. Tompkins launched the Hope Challenge this year, where the goal is to see 10,000 Hope Connections take place. So I want to welcome Dr. Rosalind Tompkins to the show. Hey, how are you, Dr. Rosalind? We want to thank you for the tremendous work that you do. That's just awesome. That's, I mean, we're, we give gratitude, to, especially to people. And we're, we really have gratitude today to have you on the show. Well, it's, it's a blessing to be with you guys. I am very grateful. Awesome. All right. So I will start out and specifically enough, how did this all come to pass? You being involved in Mothers in Crisis and stuff. How did that get start? Well, Mothers in Crisis, uh, we're celebrating 30 years this year. And uh, it's a 501c3 nonprofit organization that I founded uh, to help women uh, just like myself. And uh, that was women who are in recovery from drugs and alcohol addiction. Uh, I had four years clean at the time, and it was during the crack cocaine epidemic. And, um, and it, it was really uh, at, a, at a time where so many uh, families were in crises uh, because of this. And, uh, and, and I, felt, I felt as a social worker, as I was working in the field, um, that there was more that I could do. There was more that I could give. So I started Mothers in Crisis. And like I said, that was, uh, over, that was 30 years ago. And since then, we've helped over 10,000 families and counting uh, break free from drugs and alcohol addiction, as well as many other things. And now we have this whole hope campaign with the April National Month of Hope and this hope initiative. I absolutely love that you have that you're helping mothers in crisis because having the weight of the world on ourselves and putting ourselves last. It seems like it's so easy for us to be in a state of crisis and not even acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And especially now, because it, it may have started with the addiction. And uh, but over the years, uh, we have expanded and realized that really everybody needs hope. As a matter of fact, according to the survival laws of three, that's often quoted, you can only live three seconds without hope. Right. So I just really believe that with all the things that we've been going through, um, def different populations of people uh, need hope desperately. So that's why we're excited about this hope campaign. So tell us more, Dr. Rosen, what is a hopeologist? Well, hopeologist, that is my moniker. And actually, it is our trademark. I have a trademark with the U.S. Patent and Custom uh, Office of the United States, and it is Category 35, and it is the promoting hope through public advocacy. So it's really all about all the things that we do to promote hope. And with one of the main things being April is National Month of Hope, uh, that's, that's, one, that's what we do. I'm, a, I'm an advocate for hope. <laughs> and so how that's, did you go, go ahead no, I was gonna how say, did you get hope as the month of april how did that happen well our organization my organization mothers in crisis in 2017 we applied with the national day calendar and uh we applied i was surprised that there was no uh month for hope 
And uh, so we applied and uh, we were successful. So that was back in 2018. Well, 2018 was the first year we celebrated. So this is actually our fourth year of celebrating April as a national month of hope. And also we've gone international this year because we have um, we have Pakistan on board and they've been celebrating this year and uh, and kicked it off in Pakistan as well as, as Nepal, some of the other countries that we're affiliated with. So it's, it's already kind of gone over the, the wall and over the borders. <laughs> <laughs> So what is a, what I want to know is what's a hope connection? So how can somebody get involved and how can they become a hope connection? Well, hope connection is what we, it's one of the strategies that I really believe is, is needed now and, and very life changing uh, whenever, well, first of all, let me just step back. The, the first thing that, that what we're, what we're promoting through this, this, this whole hope campaign is for people, individuals themselves to become more hopeful because you can't give what you don't have. So we have these strategies that you can learn how to think hope, how you can train your brain to become more hopeful, how you can have hope breaks. And then once you get this hope thing flowing really good, then you can make a hope connection. You make a hope connection with someone by having a hope chat. And then once you have a hope chat with them, you can create a hope, a hope fusion and then hopefully create a whole hope sphere within <laughs> groups, within communities, and we believe within nations where we can all just become more hopeful. Because really, this is not about, this is not a Pollyanna kind of thing. You know, I wish I may, I wish I might wish upon a star tonight. It's not about an emotion, but it is about a significant expectation that things will get better, that no matter what you're going through, you can make it through it. And, uh, and, and I believe it's so important, especially with the suicide rate continuing to increase uh, over these past couple of decades now for the first time where people, you know, they get to the point, especially young people between the ages of 18 and 34 hadn't even really lived. And they get to the point that uh, you know, I might as well give up and they and they take this permanent solution to a temporary problem. And I believe that if we can have hope, which is future oriented, and if we can begin to spread this hope by making hope connections, at least we can say, especially we've had to have hope over 2020 that that with the with the corona pan, uh, coronavirus pandemic, we've had to have hope and believe that we're going to make it through this. We're going to get on the other side of it. And, uh, and, and we are, you know, how, how are people that you've been helping dealing with the pandemic, what challenges they've gone through, which we've all gone through throughout mm -hmm. the world, but especially with the population you work with to help. Well, the, one of the, the, the biggest challenge right now with the, with the pandemic, uh, is, is, uh, vaccinations and, and, uh, you know, helping people to, to see that as a, as a viable solution, uh, as, as one of the solutions um, to, to, to helping to get back to this place that we call, well, the new normal now. Um, I believe that it's, it's been challenging just, just with, the, uh, with the isolation that many people uh, have, have had to go through, um, with the quarantining, with, uh, with, with many that were sick, uh, because they received, they got COVID themselves or they lost loved ones or had loved ones that were sick. So in so many different instances where people w wanted to just give up, uh, teachers um, afraid and, and my daughter is a teacher. So that was a that was a big issue when having to go back into the classroom. So so I really believe and what I've been what I've been able to see is that is that when people just hold on to that rope of hope and say, you know, uh, we're, we're going to make it through it. It's going to be all right. And here is why, because this hope, our acronym for hope stands for helping others practice empowerment. So it's about it's about action. It's not just about, you know, sitting back and hoping, but it's about hoping in a way that because the light is turned on, I can think of solutions. Because when I'm hopeless, all I see is darkness. And it's like, I, you know, I can't see my way. Well, it's never going to change. Nothing's ever going to be right again, you know. But whenever you have hope, you begin to say, well, maybe I should try this. Or maybe I could do that. 
or, you know, it just helps to to get your brain engaged and looking for different ways to cope and to make it through. So that's what I've been seeing. I've been seeing those who have grabbed hold of hope uh, really thrive during this time, even in the midst of the pandemic. What are some of the mechanisms that you're using to extrapolate hope in other people's lives and well, exercises for them to do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, one of the main things that we're promoting, as, as I have my, my ring on, this is a reminder to take a hope break. And a hope break is, is a break in your day where you have to intentionally schedule a time to, to just get by yourself for maybe like five minutes. And then once you get along, then to just to begin to breathe, just mm -hmm. to take five to 10 deep breaths and then begin to think about the best case scenario, because often we think about the worst case scenario, but begin to think about you know, situations say I've been trying to get a job and I've been going everywhere and, and nobody's hiring. And, you know, your mind starts thinking, no, I'll never get a job. It'll never happen. But doing your hope break, you think about it and you say, you know what, I'm going to make it. I'm going to get hired. I'm going. This is going to work out. So you think about the best case scenario and then you make an affirmation where you speak that you speak that out over your life. You speak mm -hmm. it so your ears can hear, and then you repeat it as often as, as needed. And I'm telling you, we, we first instituted these hope breaks back in 2018, and it really, really makes a difference because after a while, you just start thinking more in that way. It's, I always tell people, it's not the first thought, it's the second thought. And I, I love that because that's a lot of what, you know, I work with women and, and about their self-care journey. And I think it's really powerful because one of the things I talk about is taking a pebble and moving from one side of your, you know, pocket to the other side and learning to say no. So stopping and taking that moment of breath is huge. It's really, really important because men and women don't do that. I mean, I'm sure you're seeing too. I know, you know, you talk about the mothers in crisis, but I'm starting to see as well, we have a lot of men that are starting, you know, that like you're talking about suicide rates and, and I, I'm a mom of two young men and my son, you know, has lost a couple of young friends, like you said, to take mm -hmm. on a permanent to something that's temporary, right? And so mm -hmm. are you starting to see any of that, those two come together and are you expanding and, you know, as you're starting to see that happen, have you thought about the, the male side of the hope as well? Oh, yes, it's, it's definitely it's for everyone. So we are, you know, we started out and we still have the name Mothers in Crisis, but we are, you know, it's for everyone. And this hope that we're talking about is non-sectarian. So it's, you know, it's, it's actually unifying. And, and when you were talking, I thought about this other, st this strategy that we've been implementing this past, uh, this past campaign is the Balls for Hope strategy, where we're giving people these stress balls for hope. Because one of the things that what they're finding is that during the pandemic, people have begun, and, and this is everyone, uh, to have stress and then not even realize it. And they started to grind their teeth. So I don't know if you've heard that, but they go to the doctor, I mean, to the dentist and find oh, out wow. their teeth is, is uneven because they've been grinding it, didn't even know that they were grinding it. And, they're, and so, so with these stress balls of hope, we've been giving them out to frontline workers. We've been giving them to different schools and, and uh, just anyone that, that may need hope. And also with, with that, some help as well, just distrib uh, mm -hmm. distributing food and things like that. And, and it's making a difference. And we say, whenever you're feeling stress, you know, just every day, take this stress ball, squeeze it, squeeze this ball. And, and, and know that there is hope. This is a way to, to, first of all, get your endorphins going in your brain. Who doesn't like a ball? You know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's, and it's just, a, just as a way to relieve some tension. So we've been looking at, at all types of ways to, to help everyone to become more hopeful. So it's not just for the mothers. Now, Dr. Roslyn, when you talk about, you know, specifically enough, the pandemic, the stresses that we're, we're going through and all these different things, what do you think ultimately, is how, why should we have hope? What is your ultimate message for our listeners today? 
I believe that that we should have hope because we're a strong nation and and we've been through things before, maybe not this, but we're going to get through this. And that's what hope says. Hope says it's going to be all right. My my latest book, as long as there's breath in your body, there's still hope. As it says in in, in Latin, the Latin uh, is dum spiro sparrow. While I breathe, oh, yeah. I hope. So we so so that's what I would say. Just, you know, just keep breathing and 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 just keep doing the things that you must do to make it through it. And, and we're going to be OK. Don't give up. Definitely. I absolutely love your light. Thank you so much. And do you have because you are such a gratitude mother. Do you have a gratitude moment that you could share with us that brought about you? helping and doing all of this wonderful things that you're doing. Yes, I can share it. And I talk about it. Uh, one of the things that I talk about in my book, uh, as long as there's breath in your body, there's still hope. And this was years ago, you know, when I first started Mothers in Crisis and I was working with the, with the women and uh, it, it just seemed like um, that they weren't changing. Things weren't getting any better. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I was a single parent at the time. And my daughter, she was uh, she was, you know, a baby. And, and I remember one day I came home from just doing a group and working with the women. And I was just in tears and I was and I was just saying, you know, I, I, you know, Lord, I can't I can't keep this. I can't keep doing this. You know, this isn't working. And then I just heard inside. Rosalind, remember, as long as there's breath in their bodies, there is hope. And I remember how that was just like a lifeline that was given to me at that time. And it became my mantra. I, I immediately uh, trademarked it way back then. I've written this is my second book and I've added the word steel in it. But it's 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 I'm, it's such a great it was so uh, it was such I have such gratitude for receiving that and being able to share that with so many others over the years who have grabbed hold of it. And I see people, you know, every people, all walks of life, different ones that have heard me and they know that saying of mine. And they tell me how they've said it. They've, they've been going through something. And then they thought about it. As long as there's breath in my body, there is hope. So, you know, that's, that's a gratitude moment for me still. I would say every day is like a moment of gratitude for you. It's a day of gratitude and bringing yeah, it that is. around. It and is. Because we need hope, honey. We need hope. We need for everyone to have it and to have those moments where you can shift your mind a little bit away from the negative. It's the hardest thing. The easiest thing is to go with your heart. The hardest thing is to go against your mind. Mm-hmm. 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 It, it, absolutely. That's why we spend a lot of time, you know, with what we say, think hope. Train your brain, do things that that intentionally will bring you more hope and get you to that place where you don't just I mean, because, listen, we could look at all the television and we could look at things all around and and everything that's happening. And and you just don't want to get up out, out of bed. So so you you have to intentionally begin to focus on the gratitude moments and and those things that are real. And those things that that you do exactly. have, because I believe they go hand in hand. You cannot be hopeful uh, without having gratitude. Pearl, anything else to add before Jen sends us off? <laughs> well, if you'd like to find out more information, go to makeahopeconnection.com. <laughs> I will be going there, that's for sure, because I just love your energy. I love your message. And I, like you said, more we need more hope in the world. And I'm always a glass half full girl, so I'm always hopeful too. So I love your message, Dr. Rosalind. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, Jen, you can send her off. Oh my goodness. I am so happy that we have had such a beautiful time today with Dr. Rosalind Tompkins and all of you listening with us on the Gratitude Radio Network and hope that you have gratitude everywhere that you go. Remember, you are blessed, you are loved, and you are sacred. Have hope today. 
and go to makeahopeconnection.com. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Pearl. All right. Okay. Awesome. Thanks again. Okay, guys, that was again, Gratitude Radio Network's Your Beautiful Day. Take care. 